All right, so uh, last lecture we looked at uh, the pressure field and the velocity field around the supersonic airplane, right? And uh, start to derive a set of equations that governs the pressure around uh, an airplane. So this is what we looked at last lecture, right? So if we move a slice from the nose of the airplane backwards, we can see that the pressure field uh, is almost like a set of waves propagating from the airplane outwards. Right, so playing through the video several times, we essentially see this as almost like a wave in a surface wave in a pond. And then we derived a set of equations that uh, tells us that the pressure field actually does behave exactly like the surface. It, it's, we derive a set of equations that we call the wave equations. You OK? <laughs> yeah. All right. So the equations we derived ended up looking like that. Okay. Uh, we the equations we derived ended up looking like one minus the square of the Mach number times the derivative, the second derivative of pressure in the x direction, plus the second derivative of the same pressure field in the y direction plus the second derivative of pressure in the z direction is equal to zero, right? So that's the equation we derived. So here I want to clarify a little bit on, on the derivation because I got a question last uh, uh, last week, right? So for example, when we are taking, we derived uh, the green equation without these uh, red uh, uh, squares. And then we are saying, okay, we take the derivative of this equation in the x direction to derive the second order derivatives. The question was, why didn't I, why didn't I take the derivative of rho u, right? Because if you use the chain rule, the derivative of rho u du dx is equal to u rho u is square u dx squared plus another term, which is the derivative of rho u with respect to x times the original derivative. Right. Is the question clear to everybody? Right. So why did I neglect that term? Right. So I think did you ask the question? Okay. So I neglect that term because uh, let me let me just uh, do a little bit of uh, a further analysis down here. Right. So so if I have a rho u times du dx, I want to take a further derivative with respect to x. So that as you have said, uh, is the summation of two terms. Now the question is, when the perturbation right, caused by the presence of the airplane goes to zero, so that, that means when the perturbation is very small, when the airplane is very slender, right, the resulting Perturbation is going to be very small. Uh, perturbation from a uniform flow field is, is very slow, right? How does these two terms compare? Okay, so essentially what, I, what I'm asking is uh, if the airplane shrinks from a relatively thick airplane to half of the thickness, okay, how much does this term reduce and how much does that term reduce? If I have a zero thickness airplane, no angle of attack, right? No airplane at all. Rho u is finite, right? That just uh, flows, the air just uh, flows through. D, uh, d square u dx square is zero. And this is also zero, this is also zero, right? There, is, there are no derivatives. Now, when I shrink the, when I take an existing flow field where these derivatives are non-zero and shrink it by a factor of two, rho u stays the same order of magnitude, right? Doesn't change much. The derivative of u with respect to x squared decreases by how much? If I shrink the amount of perturbation by a factor of two. Four? Are you sure? I'm not enlarging the airplane by a factor of two. I'm just decreasing the perturbation to velocity by a factor of two. 